Hello and welcome to Tech Deals unboxing and overview of the Gigabyte Aorus Gaming 5 Z370 motherboard. This is a very nice near top of the line motherboard with a ton of features we're going to go over in this video. Linked down in the video description will be a number of links. First of all, the link to my Gigabyte comparison video where we looked at the Ultra Gaming, which is below this, and the Gaming 7, which is above this. So this isn't a comparison. There's a comparison video link down below if you're interested. Instead, we're going to do a deep dive and take a look at all the features very closely on this board. Also linked down in the video description below will be links to Amazon and Newegg for this board as well as the others compare prices. A lot of the value of this board versus the others comes down to what the current price is when you watch this video. On the day I recorded this video in February of 2018, this motherboard was almost exactly the same price as the Ultra Gaming but $50 less expensive than the Gaming 7. So today, right now, this is the deal. If, on the event that you find the Gaming 7 for $10 or $20 more than this, the Gaming 7 may be the deal, and so on and so forth. But right now, this is a really good deal. Before we open up the motherboard and show you everything in the box and then I go over the motherboard in detail, let me talk about the processors first. To be completely honest, there's really only one processor that I would put on this motherboard, the i7-8700K. It's currently about $350, six cores, 12 threads, top of the line chip. The reason for that, this board retails for $200, although occasionally a bit cheaper. $200 for the board, you're gonna spend $200 on DDR4-3200, 16 gigs of RAM, which is the minimum you'd put on a board like this anyway. $100 for a top-end cooler for maximum overclocking, SSD, graphics card, hard drive, etc. By the time you've put all that around it, $350, 250 for the i5, it doesn't make any sense. Now, I am going to make a detailed processor comparison video. It's been waiting for the rest of the chips to come out, which should be out by now. But in any case, the i7-8700K is the one I recommend. The i5-8600K has been asked about a lot. But you save $100 and you give up half your thread, six threads versus 12. I think the better long-term play is to spend the $100 and get the i7. If you're willing to make a compromise, well, to be completely honest, that's what Ryzen 5 1600 is for, but the rest of that conversation is for another day. Now, would I put the i3 on this? Absolutely not. The i3 might have a place. I understand why some people might buy the i3 8350K. There are certain games, World of Warcraft, Star Wars The Old Republic, and others that don't use more than four cores, but will use five gigahertz but I don't know that I would put it on this board. You can buy less expensive boards closer to $100 that will run that i3-8350K at five gigahertz without a problem. Although, if you just want the RGB and the features and the Wi-Fi or perhaps future expandability with the ninth gen chips, then okay, fair enough, you might do that. But just keep in mind, it's a lot of motherboard for that CPU. One of the benefits of buying a motherboard like this versus something a bit less expensive are the features on it. And I'm not talking about performance. I'm talking about the quality of the sound chip. And this does have the Realtek ALC 1220, which is about as good as it gets for onboard sound. It does have the Sound Blaster 720 software, which is a software solution that makes you make customizations and options, which is a nice touch. It does have a bunch of USB features, including USB 3 Gen 2, 10 gigabit per second. It has tons of RGB and a bunch of RGB headers both the analog as well as the new digital header, so you can connect a ridiculous amount of RGB cables to this if you want to. It does include an Intel Gigabit Ethernet LAN cable as well as Intel Wi-Fi, AC Wi-Fi. But please note that it is only 1x1, so it's a single channel. It's not as fast as, for example, the 2x2 connections. If you want to just get online, it's perfectly adequate. If you want to do gaming with fast responsiveness and low latency, you really want an add-in card that is 2x2 channel, and basically you're going to get a better connection with those unless you're like right next to whatever your Wi-Fi router is, but if you're right next to it, you can just plug in a LAN cable. In terms of expansion options, there are a ton of USB ports on here. There's also three M.2 slots, so you can put SATA or NVMe drives on them. You also have a debug LED, so if you're overclocking or trying to figure out why your system isn't booting, there's a two-digit readout right on the board. That's pretty nice. It does support up to DDR4, 4133, that's really quick and really expensive. Most people probably shouldn't bother. DDR4 3200 or maybe 3600 is probably the sweet spot in terms of price to performance. There are eight fan headers on this thing. If you are looking to put a ton of case fans, coolers, and other options on here, you have great connectivity in that department. And 
It has both HDMI and DisplayPort output. If you want to use Intel's integrated graphics for whatever reason, you certainly can. It does support 4K 60Hz monitors on that DisplayPort. And with all the talking out of the way, why don't we open this up? Now, I do want to give you guys a disclaimer. I have not used this board yet, and I probably won't by the time I actually edit and upload this video. That's because I've used the Gaming 7 above it, and I've used the Ultra Gaming below it. Both got to 5 GHz on appropriate coolers without a problem. I am not remotely worried about the power delivery of this board going to 5 GHz on any of those chips. It's a feature comparison. It's a look at the options on the board. I don't need to plug the board in and test it because of that, because basically going above and below it covers the one in the middle. Taking the board out of the box, it's a board in anti-static wrap. I know, it's exciting. There is some plastic protective wrap here on the IO shield, and since people seem to like to see this pulled off, here we go. And one more on the bottom. With the motherboard over here for the moment, here's everything that comes in the box. First of all, we have the IO shield, and it's very nice. It's very shiny, and it's printed on here with all the ports and everything, so once in the back of your case, you know what you're plugging in. An RGB extension cable. So if you don't want the RGB lights to start at the board, you want them to start maybe ringed around the case somewhere, this lets you just simply move the starting point for your RGB. Four SATA cables are included. That's very nice. Too many motherboards these days are only coming with two, so they give you four. There are six ports on the board, so if you want to use them all, you'll need two more, but there's four nice ones in the box. NVIDIA High Bandwidth Bridge Adapter. Very nice. Not all motherboards come with these, and you can easily spend $20 or so buying one online. It's not fancy. It's not RGB, unfortunately, but it does come with one in case you want to SLI the 10 series NVIDIA cards. This is really nice. Why don't all motherboard companies do this? I don't know. This is a connector for the front panel connections, power switch, reset switch, hard drive activity light, etc. Basically, you take those and you plug them directly into here and then you plug this onto the board. Rather than trying to take all those little connectors and squeeze them onto the board in your case, just plug them in here. Very simple and easy to use. I love these. Wi-Fi antenna. I'm very glad to see that they've done it this way. I commented earlier that this is a one-by-one -one connection. It's not ideal for gaming, but at least they give you a good antenna. It's not just a stick off the back or an internal antenna. These two wires here connect to the IO shield, and then they run out, and you can mount this antenna on your desk or away from your computer to get better reception. So in terms of usefulness, I would put this solidly in the middle. Multilingual installation guide. This is sort of a quick guide. For anybody who hasn't done this before, it's handy to have. User manual and CD. If you need to get online for any reason, you need the drivers or something, Windows 10 has the drivers built in, so I don't know why you'd need it. Download the latest versions of the software directly from Gigabyte, and then of course the manual for jumpers, selectors, plugs, and everything else on the board. This is an interesting one. These are thermoresistor cable thingies. They're temperature sensors. Basically, they're, they plug into the motherboard and you can use them to monitor temperature anywhere in your case that you want to monitor. They actually stretch out pretty far. They go up much longer than this and essentially put the end of it wherever you want to measure the temperature. So if you want to measure near your graphics card or maybe near the uh, heat exhaust or your radiator, it gives you another way to monitor temperatures if you're an extreme overclocker. In the past, when I've done these sorts of videos, I've gone around the board and spent five minutes explaining to you every single switch, port, plug, connector, and adapter on the board. You can do that by downloading the motherboard's manual for free. There's a diagram right in the manual. So we're not going to be doing that today. Instead, I'm going to offer you my thought on how this compares to other boards on the market and, again, reiterate, i7-8700K is the right CPU for this board. The ASUS ROG Strix eBoard, the MSI Gaming Carbon Pro AC board, and the ASRock Tai Chi board are the direct competitors to this in terms of capabilities, price, features, etc. Now those boards are a little bit different here and there. The RGB is a bit different. Some of the connectivity is a bit different. The Tai Chi may have a different, well, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, but the point is they are, in terms of power delivery, overclockability, capability, expansions, M.2 slots, roughly equivalent to this board. The truth is, all of them are equally capable at overclocking to 5 gigahertz. I know, I've had them all on my test bench. In fact, my test bench back there has the ASUS ROG Strix Dash E. The Gaming 7 has been back there. The Tai Chi has been back there. And of course, the Gaming Carbon Pro I built in the $2,000 Cadillac build. 
it really comes down to preference of brand, appearance, and connectivity options, which simply comes down to figuring out which connectivity options do you want. I often get asked in the comments beneath my motherboard videos, which board is the best? Which board is the fastest? Which board should I buy that will do the most? And the answer is whichever one you want. There is no best board. There's just the right board for you. I mentioned at the start of the video, linked down in the description below, will be the comparison with the three different boards, the Ultra Gaming, the Gaming 5, and the Gaming 7. Now, in that video, I didn't take them out of the box and point out all the features, and several people said, why didn't you take them out of the box? Well, because you can see all that online. That was kind of my reasoning and logic. Instead, that was an analysis video of the relative feature differences and where I thought they fit into the market. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this video and this format. Do you want to keep seeing this? Do you want to see the Gaming 7 done, similar to this taken out of the box and talked about in terms of its relative position? Or do you only want to see motherboard comparison videos, either three boards from one manufacturer or perhaps one board from each of the companies? Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check the links in the video description. All motherboard and CPU reviews will be linked down there in one playlist. The specific video with the three gigabyte boards and of course the Amazon and New Links, New Egg links for everything as always. Follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, and support me on Patreon if you're able to. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.